Welcome to Life Steam. Let's discuss skills that separate successful kids who shine from those who struggle. Number one, self-confidence. The majority of parents associate self-esteem with self-confidence. You're special, they tell their children, or you can be anything you desire. However, there is no evidence that increasing self-esteem improves academic performance or even genuine happiness. However, studies demonstrate that students who relate their grades to their own efforts and strengths perform better than children who believe they have no control over academic outcomes. True self-confidence comes from achieving well, facing challenges, devising solutions, and rebounding on your own. Fixing your children's problems or performing their responsibilities for them just reinforces their belief that they don't believe I can. Kids who are self-assured understand that they can fail but also bounce back, which is why we must let go of hovering, snow plowing, and rescuing. Number two, self-control. One of the most frequently associated strengths to success is the capacity to control your attention, emotions, thoughts, behaviors, and wants, and a surprisingly untapped key to helping youngsters bounce back and succeed. Giving signals is one method of teaching self-control. Some children struggle to shift their attention from one activity to another. That is why teachers employ attention signals, such as striking a bell or verbal instructions, such as pencils down, eyes up. Create a signal, practice it with others, and then expect attention. I need your attention in one minute. Say a few, are you ready to listen? Stress pauses are another option. Slowing down allows them to think. Teach your child a pausing prompt and they can use that to remind themselves to pause or ponder before acting. If you're angry, count to 10 before responding. When in doubt, pause, reflect, and cool off. Don't say anything about yourself that you wouldn't want said about you. Number three, integrity. Integrity is a set of taught beliefs, capacities, attitudes, and skills that provide children with a moral compass to help them recognize and do what is right. Defining our own expectations is a critical piece of the puzzle. Giving kids the opportunity to build their own moral identity alongside and independent from ours is equally vital. It is also important to notice and encourage ethical behavior when your child exhibits it so that they understand how much you value it. Call out integrity. Then describe the deed so your youngster understands what they did to merit praise. Using the word because makes your compliment more specific. You demonstrated integrity by refusing to spread that rumor. You demonstrated integrity by keeping your pledge to attend with your friend even if you had to cancel the slumber party. Number four, curiosity. Curiosity is the recognition, pursuit, and desire to investigate unfamiliar, difficult, and ambiguous events. I like to employ open-ended toys, technologies, and games to help kids develop their curiosity. Give them paint, yarn, and popsicle sticks to build with. Alternatively, provide paper clips and pipe cleaners and challenge your children to see how many unexpected uses they can come up with them. Another approach is to simulate inquisitiveness. Let's see what happens instead of that won't work. Instead of responding, ask, what do you think? How do you know that? How are you going to find out? Finally, when you're reading a book, or watching a movie, or even walking by someone, employ I wonder questions. I wonder where she's headed. I'm curious why they're doing it. I'm curious what happens next. Number five, perseverance. Perseverance enables children to persevere when everything else makes it easier to give up. Mistakes might prevent children from completing their tasks and excelling. So don't allow your child to overanalyze their condition. Instead, assist them in zeroing in on and identifying their stumbling block. Some children abandon their studies because they are overwhelmed by all the problems or all of their assignments. Breaking down tasks into smaller segments aids children who struggle to focus and get started. You can teach your child to chunk it by covering all of her math problems except for the top row with a piece of paper. As each row is done, lower the covered paper down to the next row and the next. Older children can write out each assignment in order of difficulty or on a sticky note and do one task at a time. Encourage them to accomplish the most difficult task first so they don't have to worry about it all night. As children accomplish larger amounts of work on their own, 
their confidence and perseverance grow. Number six, positivity. Optimistic children see problems and hurdles as transient and surmountable, making them more likely to achieve. However, there is a starkly opposed viewpoint, pessimism. Children who are pessimistic regard challenges as permanent, like cement blocks that cannot be moved, and are thus more prone to give up. Teaching children to be optimistic starts with us. Kids take our words as their inner voices, so pay attention to your normal message throughout the following few days and evaluate the outlook you provide your children. Would you say you're more pessimistic or optimistic on average? Do you normally describe things as positive or negative, half full or empty, good or awful, or through rose-colored glasses or blue-tinted glasses? Would your friends and relatives have the same opinion of you? If you see that your glass is half empty, remember that change begins with a look in the mirror. If you notice pessimism, explain why becoming more optimistic might be beneficial. Change is difficult, but it is critical to set a good example for your child. Number seven, empathy. This character quality is classified into three types. Effective empathy, when we share another's feelings and emotions. Behavioral empathy, when empathic concerns motivate us to act compassionately. And cognitive empathy, when we understand another's thoughts or put ourselves in their shoes. Children require an emotional vocabulary in order to develop empathy. Here are some ways for parents to teach their children about this. Label emotions. Intentionally name emotions in context to assist students in developing an emotional vocabulary. You're overjoyed. You appear to be upset. Inquire. How did that make you feel? You appear to be afraid. Am I correct? Assist your youngster in understanding that all emotions are normal. It is how we choose to express them that can lead us into problems. Share feelings. Children require opportunities to express their emotions in a safe environment. Make that room by expressing your own emotions. I didn't get enough sleep, therefore I am irritated. I'm fed up with this book. Also observe people's expressions and body languages at the library or park. What do you think that man is thinking? Have you ever had a feeling like that?